Hey, it's Will with Sonda Creative, and today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make some cool energy effects in Photoshop. There's about a million different ways to do this, but this is a way I've found that I think doesn't take too much time and it's really easy for beginners. Now I've already isolated my subject from the rest of the piece, so be sure to do that before trying to add any of these effects using your object selection tool, your pen, or any other tool you find that works for you. I'm also going to be using these two images that I found for free on pexels.com, and you can find tons of others just like them either there or somewhere else online. To start, make a new layer underneath our subject. Get out your brush tool and set one color to black and the other to a color you like. For my brush, I'm using the smoke brush we made in our smoke video. Check that one out if you want to know how to make something just like it, but otherwise you can use a good special effects brush or even a soft brush in a pinch. Now just draw a cloud of energy behind your subject with your brush tool and make sure to alternate between the two colors. You can do that by hitting X on your keyboard and just kind of have fun with it. Fill in the space the best you can. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set it to around 10 and hit OK. Add a hue saturation layer on top of it and bring up the saturation to bring out the colors a little bit. Time for smoke. Bring it in your canvas underneath your subject and set its blending mode to screen. In my case, my smoke lines up so it doesn't show any borders or suspect areas, but if yours does, you can always hide parts of it you don't want with a layer mask. Duplicate the smoke with Command or Control J and make the one on the bottom bigger by stretching it like this. Now go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set it to somewhere in the middle ranges. Onto our lightning. Of course, this image has a lot more going on, so we need to prepare it to fit into this piece. First thing to do is right click it and hit Rasterize Layer. Set its blending mode to Screen, and now hit Command or Control L to bring up its Levels window. Now drag this slider over here, and you'll see it starts hiding everything but the brightest part of the image, leaving us with just the lightning. Shift the Midtone slider a little bit to the right as well, and hit OK. At this point, you can keep duplicating it and just shift the copy around. Experiment with it. Make a bunch of copies and maybe put a few in front and a few behind. Make some layer masks and hide parts that aren't working as well. Since I'm only using one picture of lightning, it's going to be pretty easy to spot some repetitive spots if I overdo it. I'm just doing this for demonstration, but if you really want to make your piece pop, it'll really help to use multiple different images of lightning to help sell it. The last big thing we're going to do is really going to bring it all together. Bring up your object selection tool with W, highlight your subject layer, and then click on it to select them. Go to Select and Mask, and bring the feather up to around 350. Go to Shift Edge and bring that down to negative 10%, and basically what we're doing is trying to only cover about the inner two-thirds of our subject. It's not an exact science, it's just kind of you making an estimate, so your numbers might actually be different from mine. Once you're happy, hit OK, then right click and hit Select Inverse. Go down here now and hit Gradient Map. Go into the map settings and choose a color combination that fits with what you're using. I'm going into blues and just choosing a preset that works for me, but if you can't find something you like, feel free to make your own gradient by choosing some colors you want and adjusting them on this slider. Once you have that squared away, hit OK, set the blending mode to multiply and drag your map to the top of your layers. Congrats! You're basically done. To finish up, let's just add a levels adjustment layer, fiddle with it, and also add a brightness contrast one too. This will really just make the whole thing look a lot nicer. And with all that done, you know a simple way to make some cool energy effects in Photoshop. Even though working on design projects may be a lot of fun, it's still incredibly time consuming and even challenging. To help you save time while still creating good work, We've got design templates for Photoshop, which allow you to finish projects within minutes instead of hours. So if you want to start saving time now, start by checking out our links in the description below.